Hey guys, welcome back to the Dad Tired Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, you can see I have a puppy in my lap. Um, for some reason, I thought four kids wasn't crazy enough, so I decided to add to the chaos. I'm not that smart. Um, <laughs> really fun conversation today with Matthew West. Obviously, super talented, has won many awards, but just fun to get to know him on another level outside of the music. Um, I think you're going to really enjoy our conversation. We hit a lot of topics on this conversation that I think um, you're going to find fascinating. Before we jump into that, I do want to thank my friends over at Samaritan's Purse for sponsoring today's episode. Samaritan's Purse, I've been a big fan of theirs for a long time. They're part of, um, or they have a project called Operation Christmas Child. I have done Operation Christmas Child for many, many years, even before I was married. I was packing shoe boxes at churches, um, even back all the way back in California. And um, always been a big fan of their ministry. You've probably heard of this if you've been around the church world for a while. You've probably heard about their their project, Operation Christmas Child, where you pack these shoe boxes either as a family or a community group or a church, and then they get sent off to the world. Um, but Layla and I actually had an opportunity to join Samaritan's Purse, uh, Operation Christmas Child, in Grenada, one of the islands, and to see exactly how these boxes get delivered and then like what happens. And it was a whole, like, it was legitimately one of the top five um, best experiences of my life. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I could, I already believed in this ministry, and I now um, support them like a million times even more. Um, just being able to see specifically what they're doing with these kids and the way that they're using these shoeboxes as a method for discipleship, proclaiming the gospel. It is incredible. It is not... One of the things that they said that stuck out to me on the trip is we do not want to be, and we are not a Santa Claus ministry. We're not just trying to deliver some gifts to some kids in need. Um, we are preaching the gospel. That is our number one goal. We are making disciples. That's our number one goal. And these shoe boxes are a very small, very important, but very small piece of a larger mission that they are trying to accomplish of preaching the gospel, making disciples all over the world. And they are doing an incredible job at that. These kids go through discipleship programs. They hear the gospel. They'll receive a shoebox. Um, only after they've heard the gospel. And then many of these kids end up giving their life to Christ. They've never heard the story of Jesus. They give their life to Christ, and then they're invited to hear the gospel again, to be to go through an actual like step-by-step -step discipleship process with a mentor. And then their parents are invited. Once they complete that discipleship class, their parents are invited. The parents hear the gospel. I mean, it's just the ministry. True, I can't speak highly enough. You can see like I'm getting excited about it because I, I genuinely, like when I was there watching, I could not believe what I was seeing and how well this organization does at preaching the gospel, getting kids into actual intentional discipleship relationships and uh, watching them grow in their faith. And then these kids end up going on to share the gospel with their family, with their neighbors. It's just really, really cool. My dog is eating the cord. I don't know why I got a dog. Uh, anyway, packing, uh, the, the time to pack these shoe boxes, they do these in November. You got to make sure they're packed so that they can get shipped out into the world. I think, let me see here, they want to do 12 million boxes this year, which is incredible. I'm confident they'll hit that goal, but I want the Dad Tired guys to be part of that. So um, go to Samaritan's Purse forward slash OCC, that's Operation Christmas Child, Samaritan'sPurse.org forward slash OCC, and then you can learn how to pack a shoebox either in person, super cool idea to do with your family or with your church or small group or men's group or whatever, um, or you can pack a box online and, um, and they'll help you figure out what to put in there so that they can get shipped all over the world. Anyway, Love what they're doing. Make sure you support them as uh, the Dad Tired community. Samaritanspurse.org forward slash OCC. That being said, let's dive into today's episode. I don't know who should start this interview because it's like, you know, it's it's two podcasts becoming one. This is a first for me. Like, uh, I'm talking with a podcast. This is going to be an episode of my podcast, but it's also going to be an episode of Jared Lopes' podcast, the Dad Tired podcast. So I'll welcome you to my show, and then you welcome me to your show. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I'm I'm super honored to be hanging out with you and doing your show. But I just was like, man, if we're gonna be sitting here talking, especially because schedules are so crazy, you know, I'm like, if we're gonna find the time to talk, I definitely want to get you in front of the Dad Tired guys too. So, man, well, um, I'm a fan of what you do. You and I got to meet backstage at. 
I think it was one of my shows with, because uh, you were buddies with Micah Tyler. Micah Tyler. That's yeah. what it was. So he introduced yeah. us, and then I called you uh, on a couple occasions, a couple of occasions, talking about just getting podcast wisdom because you're a guy. Can we start by talking about your podcast and and the origins of it and the inspiration for it and and what you're up yeah. to? Just for people who listen to my podcast and aren't familiar with yours yet, I'd love for them to just kind of right off the bat know who you are and the why of the Dad Tired podcast, which I love the name, by the way. Yeah, dude. Well, thank you. Well, first, I'm super stoked that you did not give up on your podcast and that's still going strong because I think what you're doing is really cool. Um, so I was in ministry for a long time, like 12 years in the church world, tried to plant a church. It was really, I, I planted with a guy who I thought was a close friend. We ended up really butting heads. I'm giving you like the PG version, but it w- it turned out super messy, big identity, uh, like crisis I was having at that time because it's the first time since I was 18, I wasn't in the church world and I wasn't like a pastor, like an official on staff at a church pastor as a pastor. And that started slowly um, kind of spiraling out of control, my identity mm-hmm. stuff, leading into my marriage, me as a dad. And I was just like, we were straight up about to get a divorce because I was, I pulled myself away from her, pulled myself away from my kids. And um, we were, there was a point where it was like, in my mind, I had already checked out and I was like Googling like divorce lawyers. And I was trying to figure out like custody stuff in my head. Who's going to take who, where am I going to live? It was wow. like super, yeah, it was messy, dude. How many kids did you have at the time? I had two and my son, my son was three, which was the age that uh, I was when my dad left. And so it was like really plain, like mental. I was going, I was in weird, dark spot. And so anyway, um, I, we were in the middle of a fight one day and we were in our bedroom and I came in and I was already just like, dude, I'm, I'm mad at her. I'm going to be like, just, I was in such a like sinful dark spot. I was like, I'm just going to be mean to her. And so I said something on purpose to like hurt her. My goal was just to straight up hurt her in a fight. And, um, she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes and I was like, I was in such a bad spot. I was like, I'm winning this fight because <laughs> my wife is smarter than me and she wins every fight. To this day, that's still like a marriage issue. <laughs> but, uh, but back then, you know, she was she won all the fights, and I was like, I'm just gonna hurt her. So she starts to cry, and I'm like, finally, I'm up, I'm winning, I'm winning this fight. And she said to me, um, it was a moment that changed my life. She said, Jared, I've been waking up in the middle of the night. I've been setting my alarm to wake up in the middle of the night, and I've been going into our living room, and I've just been begging God to capture your heart again. And she just, she went on to say, like, I just want my husband back. I want my husband who loves Jesus back. And I was ready for, like, every scenario of a fight, but I was not ready for that scenario. And that really, I always say, I always say that, like, the, you know, when the, the Book of Romans says it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Wow. And it was really the kindness of God through my wife that just, dude, melted my heart. All the anger that I was feeling just, like, went away. And I was like, what am I doing? And that started a journey of healing for me and really coming back into Christian community because I had pushed away all my Christian friends. So that church and, experience had kind of like was the was the beginning of making you kind of hardening your heart towards to, towards the church and towards faith. That was kind of the beginning of that. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. And I was like, I never want to be part of churches again. I don't want to be part of Christian community. And when you're in sin, you don't really want to be around Christians. Yeah. And I was like, I was just, I was living a rebellious life and I didn't want to be around Christians, but that started, um, I wrote a blog, very millennial thing of me to do. I'm like at the top end of a millennial. Yeah. So very millennial thing. I'm like process my emotions publicly. What were you <laughs> doing for work at the time? Dude, when- nothing. Like I was selling gutters at Costco. I was driving Uber, like everything to just pay bills. Um, but wasn't doing ministry. I was like doing photography and stuff. And anyway, so, uh, wrote this blog. Nobody, nobody, I wasn't like a blogger. Nobody, this was 10 years ago too. You just so like, just on a whim started. I mean, I was a pastor. So I just, there was kind of this like natural for me to like try to express what I'm uh, feeling right, out loud right. and I had no platform to do it. So I just like wrote about it and that ended up going viral. All these mommy blogs picked it up and and I started getting messages from guys all over like, dude, I'm, I basically told the story of what happened with me and my wife in that specific argument. And I got all these messages from guys who were like, dude, I'm in the same boat. Like I'm not the husband, man, father I want to be, but I, I'm not, I don't want to give up on my family either. 
And so we just started to like have this little Facebook group. There's probably like 60 guys encouraging each other. And one of the guys is like, you should start a podcast, which 10 years ago, dude, no there were podcasts. Like nobody was really listening to podcasts. So I threw my headphones in and just started recording and it went, it just, that was like the start of dad tired kind of exploding because there was at the time there was no dad podcast and I was pretty raw. I was just sharing, like, it was just an outlet for me to share my, how broken I was feeling. And it just kind of took off. So that was the start. Where did you like land on the name dad tired? I'm, I'm curious, like if you had a journal, you were sketching different titles or was, you know, just, I'm just interested in not tired, dad, dad tired. Like, yeah, uh, dude, it was, it was like tongue in cheek. Cause these guys were reaching out to me, private messaging me on, on uh, Facebook. And I was like, we should get, start a group and just kind of literally like tongue in cheek. I was like, dad, I don't, it was dead tired. Dad, tired. it was, it was like the smartest unintentional thing I've ever done in my life. Cause yeah. Cause it's guy, almost like dad is too tired to even finish a sentence or something. Yeah, That's how it right. kind of hit me like, yeah. or cavemanish dead yeah. tired. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And it's funny because like Christian, non-Christian, everyone kind of, every dad kind of like feels it, you know, it's like it's immediately relatable and it's not like dad perfect or like dad's got it figured out. You know, it's just like it immediately gives the impression that's like, I'm committed, but I'm exhausted. Yeah. It's like, Hey, this is a safe place. The ground is level here. We're all, yep. you know, we're all figuring it out, man. I yeah. love hearing the, the why of something like this and uh, it sounds like you've been on a journey with a lot of other dads who've followed along and found um, encouragement and inspiration through, through the podcast that you've done now. So the podcast is 10 years old already. I think it's like eight and a half. It's incredible. You know? I yeah. was listening this morning. Uh, I was headed home from a meeting and I clicked on one of your episodes. I think it was the episode called, uh, be wary of a, of good, of, a, of good times. Yeah. But you had in, I think in that episode you were dropping off your youngest yep for school and i realized quickly i knew we had some things in common when we're dads you know obviously but also uh it's it sounds like i was worried after listening to that episode that you and me just might be two dudes crying on a podcast today <laughs> because you uh you confessed to shedding some tears in that particular episode um can we can we swap stories about crying lately and and then and yeah, give, dude. give men I, I would, permission to be grown men who cry. I, I actually was going to ask you about that because I saw on your Instagram that you had just sent your daughter off. And yeah. I'm like, just seeing that made me emotional. Oh, Cause I, I mean, I dropped my, I dropped my preschooler off at preschool two days a week for three hours a day. And I about, <laughs> had a panic attack that's what you were telling the story you like got in your car and like started tearing up you're like it's yeah. just preschool <laughs> right dude so like where are you at like on that i mean you're you're on the other end of that spectrum Gosh, man on a it, deeper level like yeah it's um you know we're we're several weeks into it now but as a songwriter my job is to keep my emotions somewhat close to the surface right i mean i've yeah. got to be willing to go there emotionally vulnerability wise and and you do with your podcast it sounds like that's why the very first blog you wrote went viral is because you were willing to go there so we know that the ability to to you know as guys i think it's like we, we want to push it down deep and not feel the things and not feel yeah. the feelings i don't get that luxury as a songwriter really yeah. um but at the same time i, I wouldn't call myself i'm not the guy who's you know, crying at a sentimental toilet paper commercial either. Right. I don't, I don't cry at the drop of a hat, but, but man, I, I'll tell you the moment that got me, my wife was, she was very emotional leading up to the time where it was time to actually get in the car and, and drive to the university to drop her off. But there was a just, just for context for our guys. Yes. So you have dot. This is your oldest daughter. And yes. You have all dot. All you have all girls. right? I have two daughters. I have a, a freshman in college now and a sophomore in high school. OK. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what. I mean, just for your listeners, like if they're if they're closer to where you are, where you're dropping preschoolers off, you know, you're going to hear anybody who's further down the line tell you. Man, it goes by fast. And that sounds so cliche, but can I just tell you, cliches are cliches because they're freaking true. Like, right. I mean, and nobody can prepare you for just how fast. It's just like, uh, it's like the days are long, but the years are short. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden it's time. And she's going to college and we're taking her. 
and uh you know this past august comes around and it's like here it is i've been dreading this day and there was a moment before we left the house where i asked her i was like hey do you want me to do you want one more iced latte because that would be my thing for her Don't like stop. i would i would make her an iced latte already. and she Jeez. said yeah dad would you make me one and i'm telling you i went to put the the coffee in the the machine and make her drink just how i know she likes it and <laughs> standing there at the coffee bar in our kitchen i just lost it and she saw me and she lost it and that was the I would I'd like to say that was the only time <laughs> in the whole process. But man, then moving her into her dorm room, uh, just I, these waves of emotion have come over me at different times. Sometimes I'm on stage and I'm there's a song I wrote called 18 Summers. That's kind of a you know it's not kind of it's about exactly what my wife and I are going through right now with our family transition. And uh, I'll start singing the song and I'll just get like it just like it gets me man so i don't know i joke with the audiences that like i heard about this like emotion happening with women at a certain age but then i realized <laughs> the word men is in the term menopause and i was like well i don't know maybe this is maybe it's menopause it's maybe that's itself in there <laughs> yeah so maybe your dad tired podcast will transition to menopause <laughs> po the menopause podcast that's a that's better the name dude that's for sure a better name <laughs> but uh dude. i'm i'm laughing oh, because man. deep down i really am still wanting to cry when i think about having a kid in college already Oh my gosh, dude. It hit a, literally you, just you describing that story hit a, I could have started crying right that the, the latte thing is like, Oh, well, you know what? And I, I kind of, if there was one thing I could like boil it down to that, like I've thought about a lot in the weeks before taking her and in, and especially in the days right up to taking her. And then even since dropping her off at college, I just felt this urgency or like, like, did I do a good job? Like, did I teach her all the things? Like, did I, you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden just like guilt trip, like I, like you wouldn't believe I regretted, like I regretted every concert I ever played that took me away from mm. them for, for a day. I started to count up the days in a year that I was away and it just like, oh, I, I mean, just waves upon waves of, of self like, uh, just guilt, you know, self shaming yeah. of like, Oh, you could have done better as a dad. Right. And, uh, I'll tell you one of the things that, that meant the most to me, two things in the form of two letters. And it's reminded me that I need to do a better job of putting down and writing how I feel about people. Because whenever somebody does that for me, it's like gold. And, uh, there was a, a letter left by my daughter for me that she left, um, for me to read when she went off to college and I couldn't even read it for the first couple of days. I just saw it there and I knew what it was. And, and then what she shared with me just was like, you know, it meant the world to me. And then my wife wrote me a letter too, just, um, telling me from her vantage point, what kind of dad mm. she feels I've been. And, uh, that, that kind of helped me through some of the feelings of guilt that any dad and any parent are going to feel like, Oh, did I screw this up? Did I, you know, cause none of us are perfect, right? That's the essence of the name of your podcast, right? Just kind of yeah. letting yourself off the hook a little bit to say, man, we're not perfection is not the goal when it comes to parenthood. It, it can't be because nobody can live up to that. But, um, trying to be present, I guess is the goal, isn't it? You know, it's, you know, what's really, um, interesting about what you described that helped was the the white your wife writing you a letter i think i underestimated how powerful our wife's words are for us like i i think um not to get like deep in wounds here but like i think for a lot of my life i didn't grow up again without a dad so i think for a lot of my life i've been searching for somebody to just like give me those words of affirmation and and you try to find i don't know if everyone does this i i think certainly guys do this but it's like you know, whether it's a coach or, you know, you write a song and everyone's like, dude, that's a, that's such a good song. You know, everyone's just kind of affirming, 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 uh, and all of it's great, but none of it hits like our wife, hmm. you know, like none of it hit when my wife tells me something and I don't, it, also my wife is not words of affirmation. It's like probably bottom of her list. So when she does say it, I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like, yeah, you just filled my tank so much. You have no idea. Isn't that so funny how like 
in you know that book the five love languages was it gary smalley wrote that book uh no gary no, chapman gary chapman um yeah. my mom gave my wife and i that book uh as a gift before we got married and when i read it i wasn't sure it was a gift <laughs> <laughs> Because, but it is funny, you just mentioned like that maybe it sounds like, so words of affirmation might be at or near the top of yeah. your list of love languages. I mean, of course, most dudes, physical touch is usually right, fighting right. For, for number one, if we're right. being honest, right? But words of affirmation, but it is funny how I think a lot of spouses wind up, you wind up marrying for whatever reason, someone whose love language is not the same as yours mm -hmm. and therefore and there the work begins. Like I, it's the same with my wife, like acts of service would be in, and, uh, you know, and nice, nice purses. Is that one of the five love <laughs> gifts? <laughs> yeah. Gifts. She likes gifts. Okay. <laughs> you know, but, but like, you know, I could write her a, a love song. I'll dude, dude, this is so funny. So like words of affirmations up near the top for me as well, just like you, but like I, I thought I was God's gift to Emily because I could write her a song that would like yeah, just express down, my heart yourself. for her. Dude. I got a gift for you. And I'm not trying to make her sound cold hearted because that's not at all. But like when I played her a song that I wrote for her, she'd be like, oh, that's that's nice. That's sweet. But if I vacuumed, I was the hottest guy on the planet. <laughs> just <laughs> or, a cool song. Can you do the dishes? And yeah, that's like, to this present day. Like yeah. if I like last night I got up and I actually cleaned up and did the dishes after dinner and i think like i was like brad pitt to her but if yep. i had sung her a sonnet you know or whatever like it'd be Just, like eh, okay whatever yeah, cool cool but why yeah. why is that why do we grab it i mean i guess opposites attract but the same goes for our love languages yeah dude i i know some people that i've i've mentioned love languages on our podcast and some people you know harp on it because it's essentially I, the criticism people have given towards love languages is like you can't just say, well, you have to love me in this way because then it becomes about you. Like I'm not receiving it because you're not, you're not loving me right. the way I want to be loved. And it's like, well, I guess there's truth in that, but also we're all wired uniquely. And God is, I mean, the reason that caught that book has sold like six billion copies is because everyone can kind of relate to the fact that well, we're all wired. But also my takeaway from the book was the opposite of like selfishness and actually the practice of selflessness like in other words yeah. when you like if you travel okay this summer i traveled to uh europe and mm. it's like you know i was trying to speak the language in that country i did a horrible job but i was using you know google translate like i wasn't just gonna be that arrogant american who you know demanded that they speak my language like and i think about that when it comes to this topic with our spouses like i walked away from that book going like hey the the lazy approach is to speak the language that you like to receive mm. like you're best at you're best at speaking the love language that you like to receive the most but guess what dude that ain't always going to be what's going to speak the loudest to your spouse and so i mean that book that's why i didn't feel like a gift when i read the book because i was like oh i've got some work to do i need to learn a foreign language and you know yeah. what these acts of service which in my case as a dude, like that's a foreign language, especially early yeah. in your marriage where it's all about you until you get married and you're like, Oh, like there's somebody else that I got to think about. Like, right. So, I mean, that was, that was an interesting thing, but back to your point, I will say words of affirmation from, from your wife. I, I can totally agree with you as a husband. That is, I mean, and whether you've had a lack of, of, sources in your life like you just talked about with your dad like or if you've had an abundance of them like the person who's closest to you which you know should be your spouse like when that person affirms you and builds you up and and you know that they're in your corner man I've had some cool moments with my wife too where like sometimes it's a good thing to have like when you face conflict with other parts and other things going on in your world but like you're working through it with your wife. Have you had this where like yeah. there's something else going on and maybe I'm at odds with somebody else, but it's like my wife's got my back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there's just moments where it's like, it's us, it's us against the world and not in an yeah, antagonistic dude. way, but in a, in a, like a bonding way. Yeah, dude. At the end of the day, like everyone else comes and goes really like, <laughs> you know, like 
I'm going to be here. With, I mean, you're experiencing a glimpse of that, not to get back to your sending one of your daughters out, but like you're, you're 50% of the way to an empty nester, bro. Dude. Well, you're and, trying to uh, make me cry again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. So, I mean, it's just going to be you and your wife here shortly. And it's, I mean, that, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I just took my wife on a date breakfast date the other day and I'm just like, man, we got to just got to keep falling in love, keep practicing, like just knowing her as a woman and not just get through the chaos of, parenting because yeah the having a, it is us against the world in so many ways and especially like you and i kind of live when if anyone that lives a, a life a little bit in front of people which means there's criticism it, it just feels even more deep when you're white when you feel like you know it, despite what that comment said yeah <laughs> on youtube or facebook or whatever it's like oh, my wife loves me deeply. yeah i mean for and as christians obviously i'm deeply loved by the the god of the universe which is the greatest foundation words but, yeah, but to have my wife in my corner and my, and my wife tells me constantly she's like jared i love i don't care about any of the things that that people care about like all the accolades or successes that people could i don't i don't care at all yeah i just love you yeah and man bro that's that's some stability i tell you i mean i feel the same way like being a singer too it's like my wife man she could i'll be like you want to come to my show she's like i'm good like it's not that, it's not that she doesn't like my music or whatever but like she is not it's just i marry like because i'll tell you something and i'm just being honest but when i was in college or whatever like i would tend to date a girl who like was kind of digging you know mu right. she was music was i mean why do you think i started playing guitar in the first place it was <laughs> right. like was point, it wasn't yeah. gonna be my good looks that was gonna <laughs> get a girl right but like it was like i gravitated to people who were like a fan of like what I was doing musically. And then the girl I married, she was not a fan. Like she yeah. couldn't have cared less, but she's my biggest fan just in life. And like, yeah. I mean, I'm so thankful for that. You know what I mean? It just, uh, it's everything years ago. <laughs> we went through something cause I was, sometimes I'll write funny songs. You probably, I don't know if you remember this, but it might've hit your radar just in with your platform of being a dad. But I, I wrote a song called modest is hottest. And <laughs> I don't know if I heard it. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you didn't hear about it. But so it was this joke of a song that was like, because I've got these daughters and I'm trying to raise them to like, you know, understand that they don't need to like dress crazy to get the attention of a boy. Like, you right. know, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. But so I wrote this goofy song just ba basically saying like, be less, be, you know, more like Jesus and less like Cardi B. And it, dude, but people went after me. Like I was some sort of a, like cult leader, or I was like a conservative male trying to tell women what to do. I mean, it yeah. triggered everybody and their mother. And it, all of a sudden it felt like, because it was a song that was like, it was kind of goofy with my family. We even did like a funny music video because the song is clearly irony where I'm trying to tell them like, oh, the latest fashion trend is um, is a turtleneck and a modest <laughs> pair of slacks. Like I'm trying to convince them like, no, 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 that's what the kids are wearing right now. Like stupid, right? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm at the guy spending all my money at Lululemon for them, right? I lose the battle. Right. Uh, but dude, there was something about that time, Jared, that like, we rallied together as a family because mm -hmm. like it seemed like we were all in on the joke but then everybody else turned on us and then like if i pulled the song away then all the christians got mad at me because they thought i was backing down mm -hmm. to the woke mob but really as a dad i was trying to protect my daughters because mm -hmm. it was starting to turn towards them and it was one of those like if you've ever had, a, I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting canceled. It's like for 48 hours, it seems like the world is ending. And then, yeah. then the, then the mob finds another thing to be outraged about and it, and you move That's on. That's the nice thing is they move on pretty quickly. Oh um, yeah. I don't, it's, I don't have any fear of that anymore, but that was a time where my wife and I, like we locked arms and like, I was like, we were on a walk and I was like, pretty shaken up i'm like i think i may have just like stepped in something that i didn't even know i was stepping into mm. it it triggered this whole purity culture thing everything and then it all blew over but i knew who had my back and yeah and that that means everything man i feel like you're getting good at stepping in things <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. You're trying, dude, you're like the le- from in my very little interaction with you. You're like not the guy at all trying to like you know ruffle feathers and push people. No. Around, you know? But dude, I was following on Instagram when I saw you posted something recently that uh, people were just going nuts over the hat. I mean, just like the yeah, the criticism. How do you handle that? Like you said, it doesn't bother you now. Are you like? Is that a is that a learned a, a muscle you've grown in? Well, I think the thing that I'm learning is like I, I don't. My goal is not to be an. I, I certainly don't want to be an instigator or someone who pokes the bear just to poke the bear. Like right. my mission in life is to tell people about Jesus and connect to the hearts of people with the power of story and tell the greatest story ever told every chance I get. So, Mm. so I think sometimes, but as a human, sometimes you can do something that you think is funny and you can wind up getting off mission slightly too. Um, So I think that's sometimes I'll chalk it up to that, but like I have a song called don't stop praying and I thought it'd be funny to, to make a hat reminding people about the importance of prayer and it was a red hat and it borrowed a familiar phrase and it just said make america pray again right and i thought well that's a great campaign slogan (laughs) for the believer like uh you know like not choosing sides but man oh dude people lost their minds oh dude like it was i'm unfollowing i'm you know i'm so disappointed in you it was like they didn't even read the hat like they thought i was wearing a make america great again hat which and it's like man but even if i was that's the crazy part right like even which i wasn't but it's just the i'll say this this tell me if you feel this way but i've said this multiple times i feel like our world right now preaches tolerance and practices the opposite hundred percent oh yeah dude like oh we need to be loving and accepting of everybody and and we we talk a good game but we do not walk that out yeah and i've i've felt the brunt of that at times where it's like i wasn't even trying to be political i was just being goofy and like pointing people to hey let's pray again how about that you know it's crazy dude that a prayer like your liter the literal encouragement of the post was like to keep encouraging people to pray and how something like that can blow up but it just showed like we're so sensitive as a people so uh, sensitive so well sensitive. do you ever step in it with your podcast i mean are you ever i have a couple hate? times i don't have as big of a platform as you do and usually I, i'll run everything through my wife <laughs> so, <laughs> well okay so in that case like she loved that hat she because, was all for it yeah. well you know i mean i think she thought it was funny and she's like and she you know here's the deal you know what the loudest voices speaking of words of affirmation this is why words of affirmation to our spouse and from our spouse are important because oftentimes what I've discovered is the loudest voices are the minority, but they're a loud yeah. minority. They're a critical, a uh, hateful, and I'm looking for a reason to get enraged. I'm looking for a reason to, to, to cancel you. Give me one reason, and that's all I need, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and so I do think it's a vocal minority, but it is not the majority. Uh, and so I try to, if I ever offend people or whatever, I'm trying to keep that perspective and uh you know i've heard it said post and ghost you know what i mean like try yeah, not to live i, in I think comments. joe rogan said that. i heard joe rogan say that you know that he just joe rogan? Ghost. yeah he just he just well posts and ghosts. okay we're about to get hate now if we even know a quote from joe rogan somebody's gonna <laughs> well, be I'll like i'll take it i'll take it my, my <laughs> podcast listeners know i'm a big ufc fan so i'll take it you know yeah I, well he's also been a voice of reason in a crazy time yeah. that like who would have thought that he'd be you know, a sensible voice that you crazy know. anyways, times are weird. Now dude. we're definitely going to get hate. Yeah. I'll take it. It seems like, and I don't want to make this, you know, conversation, you know, negative or sad or anything. Cause I think we're every, all of us are feeling as a people just like, man, everything's just sad and angry all the time. But what I've noticed is that people who are the saddest and angriest are the ones being the loudest, you know, like I've never, we all are on social media. I scroll on social media like everyone else does. And I see, 90% of things that I don't agree with or I think it's dumb or I didn't think was a great post. And I'm never sitting there commenting like, this is dumb. Like I've, I've literally never I, done that. And it's just because I'm like the, the amount of sadness that you have to have in your life to like comment on somebody else's thing to say, this is dumb. I don't like this or whatever. It's like, bro, just move on. Like I, I heard a comedian say it one time, like you don't walk by a restaurant you don't like. And like open the door and be like, this place sucks. I hate it. You know, like your food's terrible. And then just shut the door. It's like, so true. Just walk by, dude. Just be like, like yeah, I don't eat there. You okay. Know? So what's funny is I did see a comment where 
was somebody announced proudly that they were unfollowing me. And my favorite thing is the people who like support me will like get my back and it cracks yeah. me up. But someone's like, uh, you know, hey, Sally, this is not an airport. You don't need to announce your departure. <laughs> yeah, and I, thought, yeah. I thought that was funny. Like, like I was yeah, like, just okay, quietly that's a go. good comeback. Just, like, I was like, yeah, go. way yeah. to go, man. Stick it to him. Yeah, it's a weird... <laughs> The the hardest criticism for me, because I'm getting better at it, when I first started, you know, doing things, you write a book, like I wrote a book and you've written books, like, that's a hard one. You, you write songs, you write stuff that like stays out there. That's always hard. You know, it's like, yeah, it's a little bit more permanent. Um, and that you, you work really hard on it and then you put it out to the world and you're always kind of like, do you guys like this? Oh, gosh. This, I, <laughs> like a, I mean, can we talk about that? I mean, yeah, because and you talk about if words are if words of affirmation are important to you, right, Jared? It's like sometimes, I mean, dude, I'll tell you, I mean. I just put a record out, but there's a feeling that comes over me. If I'm just being totally honest, the yeah. minute I put a record out, I'm like, if a tree falls in the forest, does anybody hear? Like, it's yeah. that this feeling that you get where it's just like, nobody cares or whatever. Yeah. And it's just, but then I like, and that's where my relationship with the Lord is. I have to return yes. to like, do I practice what I preach in my songs? Like, do I know where my true worth is found? Like, yep. what is the true definition of success? Which I think is why your podcast is so important. I got to ask you, though, real quick, though, before we move on from the political stuff, with your podcast, are you digging into, like, with talking with parents and dads about how to walk their kids through, like, this crazy, hateful world, not just with politics, but in general? Like, what how do you approach that as a dad and how do you approach that in your podcast? Are you, do you touch on it at all? I don't. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. This would be interesting. I'm sure I'll get feedback from the listeners listening to this right now from the dad tired guys. If they'll be like, dude, thank you for not going political. You know, or if they'll be like, I w wish you would talk about it more. I balance it because it's like, this is the world. The I, I always say we are missionaries in this culture. Like we are, we're sent ones. God has, there's a reason that we are we woke up where we woke up in the year and the time and the neighborhoods and the countries that we woke up in. And that's for God's glory. Like we were sent ones here, ambassadors of Christ, to spread the good news of the gospel. And so in that way, we have to be students of the culture. And I have to know like what is the culture, what are they worshiping? Uh, what gods are they believing in? And and how do I point them to the better God, the the one and true God? And so in that way, I feel like that is an angle that I feel like I should probably talk about cultural stuff more because it does make sense for us as missionaries and raising up little missionaries who are going to be sent ones out, you know? Well, um, and how it feels like, I mean, I think the the part where families, like the, the traditional family feels under attack or like, you yeah. know what I mean? Or who's raising our kids kind of right. those types of topics are are tough as well. I mean, obviously, like my kids are already like, you know, and, and we had the blessing of being able to put them in incredible Christian school where, you know, they're praying and the teachers are praying over the kids. And mm. I mean, that's, I know that's a privilege and, yeah. but you know, I mean, the stuff that I hear going on in, in a lot of public schools and what a lot of parents are having to walk their kids through, maybe what they're having to teach their kids about at a very young age, younger yeah. than you'd ever even think about. Right. Not, not only the, the political types of things, uh, you know, gender ideology, all those kinds of things, but also like, I mean, uh, how many times do our kids have to see another school shooting? And then and how do and how do we walk with our kids through, you know, the the indirect trauma they might even experience watching that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Nashville had a school shooting uh, that was just down the road from where our kids went to school. And the, the there was the thought that the shooter was was targeting our kids school as well. And so you're trying to as like as a parent, you're like, whoa, 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 I. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that I have the manual for how to handle all that stuff either. That's some heavy stuff, isn't it? Dude, you're trying to like, I should read the Bible with my kids every day and I should make sure I'm praying with them and I got to love my wife and also the bills are due and now there's a school shooting and also you're talking about 18 yeah. genders at school. Yeah. Like, there's why, so Yeah, much. it's like, hey dad, why is there a litter box in the bathroom? You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, Sorry. I moved from Portland, so that was quite literally like, re those were real conversations. I, we homeschooled, we've always homeschooled our kids. But those were real conversations happening among our friend groups, the litter box things. I tried to, uh, my, my three-year-old came into my bed this morning uh, and she woke up earlier than I wanted her to wake up. So I was like, just laying there. I was like, I was, I was like, baby, you want me to turn on the TV? You can just watch a show while daddy keeps sleeping. So I turn on the show and I'm like half asleep, but I could hear what they're talking about. This is Disney Junior. 
And I'm like, it like, it totally woke me up because I'm like, what are they talking about right now? And I, I look at the TV and again, I never know how deep to get into this stuff on, on the show. If guys are going to be like, bro, I got other out. I always feel like here's what, going back to your question. I always feel like guys are like, I have my political outs. So, like I go to people, I listen to certain podcasts for my political opinions. Yeah. I listen to my podcast and for like, you that's know, totally, dad, that's probably right. And I, I'm not trying to pull you into it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get me to stuff, but I will say, so I turned on the TV and there's like, Bro, there's some real and this Disney Junior. There's some characters on there that they are clearly trying to make a point to my three year old, and I'm like, yeah. This, I turned it off. I'm like, this is crazy. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah, anybody, yeah. You know. I think, uh, I I think there's wisdom in what you're saying though, and like, you know, it's how do we be in the world, not of it? How do we stand up for what is right and true, while also being a, a message of hope and love and pointing people yeah. to Jesus? You know, and, and Typically, pointing people to Jesus does not come as a result of us pointing at them. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So how do we, you know, I'm, I'm working that out just like you are and every other dad and try to walk with my kids through that process. I, I think that th the two things that I want to be, I don't know if this is turning out to be true, but two things that I want to be true. One would be I want my kids to really know truth and how to recognize things that aren't true. And we have a biblical worldview, so we believe truth to be as God designed it. So that's our, as Christian family and as Christians, we say God's word is the ultimate truth. That's right. Um, we view our world and what is true through God's word and how he designed it. And so then you can just, they can quickly be able to see, like, that's not how God designed things yes. for human flourishing. And that's really what we're trying to teach our kids and disciple them is like, okay, the world is saying this. And based on how we know God has designed things for human flourishing, yeah. is that true? Mm. And be able to like, you know, decipher those things. I think yeah. that's super important and where we need to be students and good students of our culture. And, and again, that's where the kind of the, I would say the more, not to use the uh, aggressive is probably the wrong word, but just like strong. That's where we need to be strong yeah. and fight against lies, lies of the enemy, lies of culture that say that is not the way God has designed things. And I'm willing to stand firm on the truth of God's word, even if it goes against culture. Yeah, because that's by, that's the lens by which we'll see, every, our kids will see the rest of the world. That's where it yes. begins. That, that's 100%. What, what did C.S. Lewis say? He said, uh, I believe that the sun, here, I'm going to look this up because I love yeah. this quote, but it's, uh, what did he say? I believe that the sun exists. Oh, as, you're, as you're looking that up, um, the other thing that I really want to be true for our, our family is just ridiculous um, joy. Like joy that doesn't make sense. Ooh. And I think joy is going to be like one of the greatest. Me and my buddy Spence were talking about this the other day. Like the world is so lacking joy that for Christians to have like this unfathomable, um, unrealistic, like peace and joy is just going to be, it's going to catch their attention. So I want us to be like a family, just like as the world is burning, <laughs> we're just like, why is that family just not rattled by this? Oh, I love that. Um, I love like, that. Dude, just because we have, we have a savior that. We know, we know, as you said, actually your new song, we know the last page, know the um, last just, page of the Bible. Billy Graham bro. said that I've read the last page of the Bible and it's all going to be all right. I want to talk about the joy thing for one second, but th this was the quote. I believe in Christianity, which is what you're saying, you know, a, a, a biblical worldview. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Mm. And like that's yeah. the lens with which we're gonna we want to teach right. our kids to look through the world and then be able to discern truth from lies. And yeah. it's never been harder. I mean, now we got so many we got so many words for lies. I love how the world keeps inventing new words: misinformation, malinformation, <laughs> right. right? I mean, it's all yeah. like, hoaxes, hoax, right? That's a popular. It's like. Uh, man, I'm so thankful for that. But talk about the joy thing a little bit more. I kind of took us back, but. No, I, dude, I think you talk about the joy thing because that's your, that's the, uh, who's the gal that you just wrote that song with? Ann Wilson. Ann Wilson. I think that, I mean, the, the point of that song is what I'm trying to get after. You know, it's like, yeah. Because when I want to be a student of the culture, what happens is I move from being a student of the culture to like getting sucked into now I'm angry at everybody. <laughs> I'm no it's longer true. a missionary. I like, kind of love, I'm it's sucked true. in, I'm mad. The news puts me in a bad mood. Me and one of my close friends, we, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff politically, but. 
man, we started getting into these like debates and it was like before we would try to write a song and it was like, we just decided we're like, bro, <laughs> we we, do this. We, yeah. Not because a good it does, it just messes with your mood, especially right yeah. now, man. And it's like, yeah. and the bottom line is, is come November, the, half the people are going to be angry, mad. I, you know what I mean? Like, and so to be carriers of joy and for our families to be, I mean, you want to talk about, a bright light. Yeah. Joy is going to shine bright because there's, there seems to be quite an absence of it. And I, you know, I don't see that changing anytime soon. So I think that's an awesome perspective to have for your family. I was just taking my garbage out yesterday and one of my neighbors was like, Hey, and, and I wasn't feeling like over the top, like anything, you know? So I was at my initial impression was to be like, Hey, <laughs> so it was a, it's morning time. But my, I was immediately had the thought of like, dude, present joy, which is a fruit of the spirit. <laughs> you know, it's know. like this, if the spirit of God is working in me and I am a tree, I talk to my kids about this all the time. If I'm a tree and, and I say, I'm a Jesus loving tree here, are the things that should be coming out of the Jesus loving tree and joy is a, is one of them. Um, and if we're not having joy, dude, then yeah, I just need to about like spirit, grow this, grow this fruit in me. You know, can you talk real quick about like, when you say, I talk to my kids about this all the time, like. Are there set times where you're, where you find yourself always like, like, do you have devotional time with the family or is it more life on the go conversations come up more spontaneously? Like sometimes I've beat myself up going like, man, okay, I took him to church. I dropped him off at youth group, but like we didn't have like our time would be like on the way to school. I would read him a scripture and pray over them before I dropped him off. But it's like, three minutes right and it wouldn't yeah. always be it wasn't all you know, i sometimes i hear about families having like kumbaya like worship services in their house at night and i'm like i'd be like man dude i i think i blew that you know but what what does that look like for you with your kids when it comes to spiritual instruction outside of the homeschooling and just dad being dad looking for moments to talk with their kids Dude, when I hear those stories of the of families that are doing that, first I just want to punch the dad in the face and then like go home and spank my kids for some reason. Those are those are my immediate reactions. <laughs> All that to say, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm, I'm failing at that. I don't know, man. I just I I really lean into the Deuteronomy six. Like as you go, as you're. I mean, there's a theme throughout Scripture. So Deuteronomy six. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then impress these things onto your children as you walk, as you talk, as you're eating around the table. And that has always felt the most natural to me in for the discipleship journey. The deepest conversations I've had with my kids were never planned. The most spiritual conversations I've had with my kids were never ones wow. where I planned to have it. I love that. It was always spontaneous. But and and then Jesus did that, right? Like Jesus wasn't at, yeah. having his disciples meet with him on Tuesdays at seven o'clock to go over the Torah or whatever. Yeah, all the miracles then, he did on the way for sure. Right, and then and then when he his last words, therefore go into all the world and make disciples. That's translated. We've heard a lot of pastors talk about it, but it's as you're going. So it just that theme kind of carries out through all Scripture. As you're going, Deuteronomy, Jesus with his own disciples, and then his last words to his disciples. As you're going keep making disciples. Yeah. And so that's always been my strategy with, I, I always say like, look as a dad, look for more 15 second moments versus like 15 minute polished conversations. Yeah, that's good. It's usually the 15 second moments, but I will say Deuteronomy starts with love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then impress these things on your children. So a lot of the time we won't impress the things on our children if we don't actually love the Lord with everything that we've got as dads. Yeah. So it actually starts with us first loving God more than anything. Well, because, you know, nobody can can sniff out inauthenticity like a kid. Oh, and, dude. and that goes with their w w when it comes to watching their parents as well. And so I think that's that's something that can, you know, hopefully is convicting for parents in the best way to go like, look, if I talk about Jesus more than my kids see me talking to Jesus, then, you know, they're, they're you know, which one's going to speak louder. And so I think that's something that's always hit home for me as well. Just uh, feeling challenged in that area that I could preach to them, you know, till the, I could talk about them being joyful and showing joy to the world. But if I'm coming home angry all the time or, you know what I mean? There was a season for us as a family where we had a, 
uh, we had hired a builder to do work for us and it was just, it turned into a train work train wreck. Like it was mm-hmm. awful. And it was just one of those nightmare experiences where you're like getting completely taken advantage of and just, and I, it consumed me for a season, like mm-hmm. where I was just so, I had never been so wronged in my mind. I was just so angry. And it, I know that joy was not yeah. the predominant, uh, people were not, walking away going that guy is filled with joy you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was not and and i know that that my kids felt that and i i had to ask for forgiveness for how i let outside circumstances affect the joy that should be joy unspeakable and joy unwavering despite the circumstances going on around me so we're all works in progress in that area hey you mentioned to me um that you're doing another podcast are you talking about that yet is that yeah, dude. We uh, so I'm doing two new ones. So we have the Dad's Hired podcast. Been over eight years of episodes there, but um, two new ones. One I'm, I've just jumped on as the co-host of Ben Roethlisberger's podcast. Big uh, Ben. Yeah, Big Ben, dude. Footballing. Um, it's called footballing. That, yeah, footballing. Dude, that's, that's his, awesome. How did you get like hooked up with that? Um, Micah, dude. The the uh, Micah the Tyler. ultimate. Yeah, the ultimate connector, man. He connected us really, and then he connected me with Ben. Um, we were Ben and I were at the same conference together and he had just read one of my books and it like um, it impacted him. And so we were able to meet and we connected as friends. We stayed close after that. And then he wanted to switch from like just being like the football guy. Like God has done such a cool thing in his life. Like God is he's dude, legitimately like one of the best dads and husbands I've ever met. Like just quite like you in the quietest places where nobody would know. I've seen that guy be so amazing as a husband and dad. I look up to him a lot in those areas, but anyway, so he wanted to talk more about like this kind of stuff, like life and not just football. And so he's like, dude, why don't you come on? We'll shift the gear of football into like more like life stuff and faith and not just football. So we still talk football, but I mean, speaking of getting haters, the Pittsburgh Steelers fans are like, who's this freaking guy? You know, like, <laughs> this guy doesn't know anything about, about football. You know, it's, it's hard to sit next to Ben. Dude, but, dude uh, that's yeah. awesome. And then there's a third one. Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, I just signed on with Kayla, the Access More Network, which I think this podcast is not. No, a part of. it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not currently with Access More. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, darn it. Speaking of stepping and stuff, uh, yeah, no. But I signed on with them. We're gonna do a, um, a daily devotional for men. So five minutes a day in God's Word, real short, just like as guys are commuting to work. Great idea. Just jump into God's Word for five Great minutes. Great idea. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so is that out already? No, no, no. Okay. We're trying to get all that loose ends of that tied up and hopefully by the end of the year. But dad that. tired people can listen to wherever they listen to podcasts. Yeah. Obviously, your listeners are listening to this episode already wherever they listen. And then the football and episodes come out how often? They're, they'll they'll be whenever the right after whatever the game was. So most likely Mondays, but it could be Love Tuesdays it. depending on Monday night games. So, and, then, and, and your podcast for our listeners. Yeah, my podcast comes out every Wednesday. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, we're having a blast doing it. And and I do have to, as we close out, I have to encourage, thank you for your encouragement because, you know, with, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate with the music and I've got a management company, a lot of things going on. And so sometimes with the podcast, it's like, man, I really love doing this, but I, I don't want to do anything unless I can do it to excellence, you know? And so I think there was a moment there where I was sort of like going, do I keep this going? And, uh, you stepped in with some really timely encouragement to, mm-hmm. to keep going. So this was really fun to be able, I, we should do this again. I'd love Seriously. to do this in person. Have you come to Nashville and hang here at the story? I was house. trying to come to Nashville, dude. I got, I was looking for an excuse to get over there. Well, we'll, we'll plan it, it farther in advance when we've got <laughs> some more time to hang, we can go have yeah. a meal and, uh, man, I'm just glad we got the chance to do this today and congrats on, and, and the books, where can people find out about your books? Yeah, dude, Amazon, that's like the number one. I mean, they're in all the bookstores, but you know, like Amazon's the best place. But if they type in your name? Just if you type in Dad Tired, pretty much every All the books come up? Yeah, books come up and websites and speaking, podcast, all of it. Dude, what you're doing matters. What you're doing is making Mm -hmm. an impact. Speaking of words of affirmation, I'm going to leave you with that, man. Like you're, You're crushing it. You've been an encouragement to me. You're an encouragement to a ton of dads out there. And apparently you're an encouragement to Ben Roethlisberger, which that's pretty cool too. So... Uh, but dude, thanks for hanging with me today. I think our listeners, both of our, uh, listeners, well, 
hope that didn't sound right. That implies that you and I each only have one listener. <laughs> no, that's probably true. The, the two people listening to this mom, thank you for downloading. Both this. sets of <laughs> listeners, I think, are going to enjoy this conversation. I'm glad we got to do this. Thanks, my brother. Me too, bro. Yeah, me too, man. Thank you so much. <laughs>